Welcome back. I'm Sandy White, your number one health and wellness cheerleader and the host of Simply Fit. We've got Jim Sweeney here today as our special guest, but before we introduce him, I do want to thank WYTV7.org for allowing Simply Fit to be on their platform for the third season. Guys, we're on a mission to save one million lives by encouraging individuals to live a Simply Fit life through health and nutrition so that they're able to overcome suicide and depression. And without your help and their platform, we could not be at the, at the rate and doing what we're doing. So go to the website, wytv7.org, and check out all of the wonderful things that we're doing in the community. Now, guys, let me tell you guys a little bit about Jim. Hey, guys, he is just an awesome individual, and, and I am glad he's on the show. So this, and I, I love setting you guys up for, before I really get into what, you know, Jim is doing. He's 62 years old, 63 years old. So I don't want to hear any excuses about you guys not exercising and doing what you're supposed to do. He found the secret to staying healthy, happy, and fit. And he adds more years to his life by adding years by adding life to his years by playing competitive basketball internationally. Since 2009, the Iceberg Quick Sweeney has competed in 100 plus master basketball tournaments in 24 countries, and he's traveled to most of the tournaments with his wife for over 40 years. Well, good for you, Jim. Sweeney has uh, also published a book called uh, old school hoops stories of an aging baller that chronicalized his uh, journey and the uh, and the combinations that uh, uh, you know the deal with his traveling, playing masters basketball and conducting businesses along the way. In the book Old School Hoops, um, Jim recalls the amazing places that he's visited, the incredible foods that he's eaten, and who doesn't love that, and yeah. the awesome people that he's met along the way. And he credits all of this to the Masters basketball for still allowing him to play the game that he loves. He calls it slowly, but I'm sure that's not the case. Welcome to the show, Jim. We're so awesome and glad to have you here. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to share my story and also share about my passion, which is uh, in the autumn years of my life to still continue playing uh, competitive basketball internationally. Awesome. So I know you said you've been playing since you were a, a wee one, but what outside of, you know, cause everybody gets, a lot of the children get introduced to basketball and football, those are general sports when they're younger, but what really drew you to basketball and then to the world of the Masters basketball? Well, there's a lot of guys out there that I know they love to fish, some love to golf, some, I live in Florida, I have friends that love boating, but all my life I've loved basketball. I've loved the fact that it enables you to stay fit. Uh, I love the brotherhood that exists, not just with teammates, but also when you get older, you don't want to deal with the nonsense in life with guys being overly competitive and seeing their testosterone overflow in the basketball court. You want to meet friends. You want to meet people that otherwise you wouldn't have had an opportunity to meet if you didn't meet them at a master's basketball tournament. So I've continued to play. I'm 63 years old. I really never stopped playing basketball my entire life. Uh, I write in my bio that I provided to you. I, I credit master's basketball with still enabling me to play the game I love slowly a, people that play masters basketball are really competitive they love the sport they're passionate about what they do but I, there are very few people that i know that allow the sport to just consume them where they're egotists when they get to later in life they want to go out and compete do their best hopefully win but they want to leave unscathed unhurt and haven't had a great experience in the tournament I agree, because one of the things that was on my mind, and I know you say you're 63, but you don't look it. A lot of people, when they get to a certain age, they start feeling uncomfortable, which what you say, um, when you play with the younger guys, you know, they're just, sometimes they're just out of order, and you don't want to get hurt. And so that's the main thing that they're worried about, bone loss and just 
injuries that they may not recover from. What is your daily routine when you are doing competitive basketball to make sure that you remain healthy? My daily routine is that I eat well. Fortunately, uh, my wife, she's uh, very physically fit. Uh, we're very uh, keen on eating only healthy foods. You know, we're not big drinkers. We like a glass of wine periodically. Uh, we don't eat fried foods. We don't eat potato chips. We have none of that stuff in our house. We try to eat well every single day. When I mean well, I mean healthy. Fruits, vegetables, seafood. You know, periodically we'll have some meat. But uh, we eat in moderation. Uh, drink a lot of, of, of water. You know, stay away from uh, the carbonated beverages. Uh, you know, really don't uh, have any diet stuff because... I think that's where you put the weight on. And we exercise almost every single day. Um, I play basketball three times a week, sometimes four. Uh, on the off days, I'm always walking somewhere and it's a lengthy walk. I normally take with my wife. Uh, I'm, a little, I'm on IR, injured reserve for the last two months. So I haven't been lifting weights, but I'll lift weights um, lightly, uh, not to be a, a muscle head, but just to stay toned. So I think the best way to answer your question is just to be disciplined and follow the same routine as often and as frequently as you possibly can. Because I remember some guy many, many years ago, probably 40 something years ago, he said to me, the best way to stay in shape is never to get out of it. And I really don't think I've ever like been out of shape where I've been woefully overweight or hadn't played in a while or hadn't exercised or just over eight myself into oblivion. So um, I enjoy staying healthy, being healthy and keeping fit. Well, we pray a speedy recovery because we don't want you to be on injury reserve much longer. Thank you. But one of the things that you mentioned about being on the Masters basketball um, team, you get to travel. So although you're on injury reserve, do you still get a chance to travel? Because I, I know um, you said you, you also do scouting for teammates. Yes, my... Um, I guess, injury or a health situation, which I'm on the rebound right now, but couldn't have come at a more opportune time in my life because of COVID. Um, we, I'm a part of a uh, global master's basketball organization. It's the largest senior sports federation in the world, and it's called FIMBA. And FIMBA is an acronym for Federation International Masters Basketball. And I'm the head of the United States and have been for many years. And I'm one of 47 individual country reps. I'm also on their international board. And what I do is I help identify and recruit older, when I say older, 35 and older men and women, and help them organize teams and take them to global international masters basketball events. And it's not necessarily just recreational stuff. It's probably what we consider the best age appropriate basketball competitions in the world and like in the men's group they go from 35 every five-year increment up to 80 and we had a our last world championship was in finland two summers ago and we had several hundred teams from i think it was 41 countries we had eight teams that played full court in the 80 plus division wow it's incredible. I played in the 60 division. There were 35 teams from, I think it was 27 different countries. So people love these things because it, it's, it's a marker on the calendar so that if you, you just can't show up to play at them. You have to be organized. You have to have nice uniforms. You have to sign all these releases to say that you're healthy, you're fit, uh, you're right, um, or you, you sign something to give your pledge of uh, – not being a knucklehead in the tournament, otherwise you can get tossed from a game. But the tournaments are expertly run. There's a lot of former uh, NBA guys, WNBA ladies, uh, European pros, uh, national team players, and Division One, Two, II, and Three college players that play in them. And they're more than just basketball. It's like celebrating basketball with an international brotherhood and sisterhood. So for me, it's incredibly special. I'm a volunteer. I've always been a volunteer for this organization. My wife always jokes with me. She says, Jimmy, I wish you would spend more time on your real job than you do on this with the old man's basketball. So that's my story with FIMBA. I love it. And 
thank you for the plug that you gave to FIMBA when we first start, when you introduced me. Uh, our motto, our mantra is add years to your life by adding life to your years, play Masters basketball. Well, I aim to please because I appreciate you coming on here because so many people just use their age as an excuse. And really, I think when you not only just not getting out of shape, as you mentioned, just never getting out of shape and doing what you're supposed to do, I think people mentally just give up on themselves. And so, um, yes, huh? I, I said they do. I totally agree with you. Yeah, and I don't understand that. I mean, they use, well, I'm getting old and this is why. No, you're getting old because you're not moving. <laughs> yes. But I'm so glad you said, because one of the things um, when you um, was talking just a minute ago about um, the recruitment, and I'm going to ask you a little bit more, but one specific one, I wanted to know, because I couldn't find it, were some of the NBA and the WNBA uh, pro players coming in there. So I'm glad to hear that because I noticed that a lot of them, once their careers are over, they do the woe is me and they they go into a slump because they can't play anymore professionally or high profile. And I think this is just awesome. Right. I'll give you a handful. And they've, I've actually played with them on the same team. They've been my friends for years. Uh, one guy lives here in the Tampa Bay area with me. Uh, not in our, not with me in our house, but he lives on the other side of the bay in Tampa. I live in Clearwater, and it's Jerry Ice Reynolds. He played at LSU. He played nine years in the NBA. Uh, he was a first-round draft pick. I think he was like the 19th pick. He played with uh, the Orlando Magic, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Seattle Supersonics. Another guy that's uh, played on uh, several USA teams, a friend of mine, his name is Billy Thompson. And he is one of the few people in basketball history that's won both an NCAA title, which he did with Louisville, and then he won two NBA titles with the Lakers and then with the Heat. And you've got other guys like Mark Akers. He played with the Celtics and other teams. He played in the NBA for many years. Uh, guys like Lowe's Moore, Big Greg Kite, the seven-footer, uh, Alton Lister. Uh, we've yet to catch the big fish. Uh, I have personally reached out to people like Michael Jordan. Uh, I've never spoken with him. Uh, I guess I've toyed around on the phone and email with his executive assistants, and he had several of them. But one of these days, we're going to get guys like that to come and play. And if they don't want to play, then they can just come and be a part of the celebration. Because all of our big tournaments, whether it's a Pan Am tournament, a European championship, uh, we soon will have an African championship that's in the in the plans, uh, world championships. If guys can't play, we want them there at the tournament so they could help um, you know, just extend their love of the game, share about some of the stories. Uh, we ran a tournament. Uh, it was not an official like European championship or Pan American or world championship, but it was a tournament here in the Tampa Bay area. And our surprise guest for the players was Oscar the Golden Hand Schmidt. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. No. He's the leading scorer in the history of basketball. He scored almost 50,000 points, 10,000 more than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He never played in the NBA. He's a Brazilian guy that played for the Brazilian national team for four sets of Olympics. And he was also the biggest star ever in European basketball. And Oscar had had brain surgery, but he still came to the gym, put on a little bit of weight. He didn't play, but he just came there. And he shook every hand pose for every single picture. We've gone to other tournaments that are associated with the Masters basketball community, not necessarily with FIMBA, but I got a buddy by the name of La Woods. He lives in Queens, New York, and he runs something every year called the New York City Masters basketball experience. And my childhood, I, and he played in North Carolina. I think you're from North Carolina, or aren't you? No, I'm from Missouri, but the radio oh, station okay. is North Carolina. <laughs> oh, okay. But my childhood idol was Earl of Pearl Monroe. And he comes to the New York City Masters experience every year just to shake people's hands, uh, pose for pictures. So does Nate Tiny Archibald. So do playground legends like Joe the Destroyer Hammond and others. So for guys that are basketball junkies like me, whether they're 40 or they're 75, Go into these tournaments, they energize you. You come back feeling like you're younger. Like my wife always says, I wish there were more tournaments. Early in our relationship, 
as I as you mentioned, is we've been married 40 years. When we were married, like the first five or 10 years, I'd play basketball seven times a week. Sometimes I'd play in two different leagues on the same day. And she'd say, Jimmy, when's it ever going to end? Now she sees if I get, if I start laying around the couch or maybe I put on an extra pound or two and she knows she's like a human walking scale and she knows these things. She'll say, Jimmy, you're going to play ball tonight. I think you need to get out. So uh, I come back and I feel so energized when I play in these tournaments and I've never had a biological brother. I have a wonderful older sister, just the two of us. And I always wanted to have a brother. I feel like I have, hundreds of brothers all over the world, different sizes, different shapes, different colors, different creeds, different socioeconomic backgrounds. But we all share this one same common bond. When we get on the hardwood, we want to kick each other's butt. <laughs> and then we want to go and talk about it afterwards. And that's right. just the beauty of what we do. And we stay fit all along. Amen. Guys, I am having a blast with Jen. We're going to take a quick commercial break from Pelvic Floor, and we're going to be back with some more from Jim and Michael Jordan. If you are watching this, we want you on the team. All right, guys, <laughs> take a quick break. Okay, thank you. 80% of women will develop a pelvic health condition at some point in their lives. There is relief. There is hope. The Pelvic Floor Store, your resource for personal health. If you're just joining us, I'm Sandy White, the host of Simply Fit and your number one health and wellness cheerleader. And we have been talking to the one and only Jim Sweeney. He is the author of Old School Hoops, Story of an Aging Baller. So, Jim, we were just having a blast of a time before we went to our commercial break. And I got a quick question for you. What is the best thing outside? Because I know you said you like, you know, y'all have the little field trips and you go to the spa and all of that wonderful stuff. But when you're doing the traveling, what's one of the like all time favorite things that you enjoy when you have to travel for the team? No one's twisting my arm on this, but traveling with my wife. And Aww. I had a team that I played with for a number of years. Even though I live in Florida, the team's name is the Indy All-Stars. And there's guys out of Indianapolis that run the team. But we have other people from other parts of, from parts of Ohio, from Chicago and elsewhere. And a lot of us travel with our wives. And the camaraderie is extra special. And our team has graduated from several different age groups. And even though we're friendly with other teams, they're not necessarily in our age groups. We're friendly with all of them. So traveling together in a pack of people that all share, you know, the same common vision and bond and passion, it makes things extra special. So let me ask you this, because I think you've already answered my question. Outside of the bond and the camaraderie, um, you said in the book that it features the history of Masters basketball in the U.S. and the growing international movement. What additional way um, do, do the audience need to know about? And then if we have some aging ballers out there that would like to be a part of the team, what, what would they need to do? Contact you or what, what's the procedure? Our website, the global website is FIMBA, F-I-M-B-A dot net. And I'm pretty easy to find um, on the internet. My last name is Sweeney and it's spelled S-W-E-E-N-E-Y. And my email is Sweeney at FIMBA dot net. That's Sweeney at FIMBA dot net. I get people multiple times a week that reach out to me, uh, not just players, but also potential team organizers and every once in a while sponsors. We can always use the sponsorship. And so what's the way that the uh, FIMBA is, is growing international? What's the movement that you want everybody to be extremely made aware of? It's just all word of mouth. You come to one tournament, you're hooked, you're addicted because every tournament at least the big ones, they have a so mega social party. Uh, we've had some tournaments where there's been 350 teams. So there'll be as many as 10,000 people at a mega social event. We had one like that in Italy a few years ago, and it was held inside of a hippodrome or a horse race, uh, horse racing facility. Uh, we also have a parade of nations, which is extra special, where you walk in your contingent 
And the last couple of tournaments, we had more than 150 people in our USA contingent. And we walk into a stadium, or in this case, a hippodrome, uh, during the opening ceremonies, and they play a song of our choosing. And we always pick Born in the USA by Springsteen. So it's extra special. And it's always the guys that are the toughies that say, come on, Swain, this is corny. I don't like this. They're the ones that shed the tears. And they realize that in elder age in life, they're representing their country, having the time of their lives, and doing something extra special. And that is outstanding because a lot of, and, and sometimes I think when people are aging out, they are looking for a reason other than what they had initially associated themselves with. So this is awesome. So guys, if you're an aging baller, reach out to Jim. So Jim, what are the top highlights of playing basketball in the 60s? In your 60s, do you want folks to know so we can get you some more players on the team? I think people out there would be absolutely shocked how fit guys are, even in their 60s. Uh, I referenced earlier the team that I play with, the Indy All-Stars. We have four or five guys on our squad. You, They run like they're 30-year-olds. They're, a couple of them run like they're track stars. Uh, amazingly, two had never played organized basketball in high school nor in college but they fell in love with the sport. They've always remained fit. They've always been crazy athletic. And over a period of time, they're, they just honed their skills. So we're a really good team. You know, we normally medal in all the competitions in which we enter. But there's several other teams like ours from Chicago, from Ohio, from New York City, uh, other places in Florida. There's a team from Maryland. There's a team from Georgia, all in their 60s. And Hey, we embrace the competition. When we go to these tournaments, we know we got to lace them up tight and get there early because they're going to be shooting for us. So now I got a question, another question. I got lots of them. I didn't see um, anything about the Olympics. Do you guys participate in that? Yes, it's a different organization than FIMBA. FIMBA would be equated to FIBA, which is the global world championship held every four years. And FIBA uh, is the largest uh, organization uh, for professional basketball in the world. In the same way that you have FIBA and FIMBA, you have uh, the United States uh, or the uh, Global Olympics, and you have the World Masters Games. The World Masters Games are all 29 disciplines that you normally find in the Olympics. And our team is already, I mean, we're, we're pretty much set to go to Japan next year, Kansai Japan. Well, we're going to participate in the World Masters Games in the premier competition, which is the best of the best of uh, older teams and older players from around the world. They're expecting over 30,000 athletes from 100 countries to participate in 29 Olympic style events. And I think the age starts, I want to say at 35 or 40. So it's kind of neat on our days off because I've, I've played in the World Masters Games in New Zealand and in Italy, we've gone to see volleyball, cricket, uh, badminton was crazy. I never expected those guys to be so, you know, so fit and so nimble. Uh, we go to see track and field. We went with about 20,000 other people in New Zealand to watch a 103-year-old woman do the high jump. Now, wow. it's a 103-year-old woman. It was the whole beauty of the fact that the lady was over a hundred years old. And I think she was from India and it, it was cute. It was special. It was beautiful all at the same time. And it happened. It took like five seconds to do 10 seconds to do, but everybody went there just to support. They were expecting a couple hundred people. They had, I don't know, 20 something thousand. They packed the stadium. It's like in Finland when the 80 year olds played for the championship in the Finland world championship two years ago, they had to turn people away from the gym. It's a couple thousand people at the gym because they all wanted to come to support the 80 year olds. So as I referenced earlier, it's so much more than just basketball. It's about brotherhood, sisterhood, you know, camaraderie, just feeling good about but, but life think, at an elder age. Yeah. And I think you guys feed off of one another's energy so that you can continue to keep moving and versus yes. sitting at home. That's what I love. I mean, I'm getting energetic and pumped up just listening. Yeah. <laughs> You think I'm energetic? My wife, whoa, man, she's like way down field ahead of me or down court. This, this is a basketball interview. Wow. 
I am so loving it. And I know we don't have much more time. We're down to five minutes. So I'm going to hit you up with two questions. And then I want you to tell everybody how to get in contact. Fire away. So one, of, so one of the questions, I know you weren't expecting me to ask you this, but you trademark um, Mike Sports, and it's a uh, comic book uh, character for um, for basketball. So just tell people a little bit about that briefly, and then hit up your uh, old school hoops sure. uh, so folks know where to get the book and how to reach you. One of the things I've been um, working on for the last 10 years, I've written 25 books, and uh, it's through the voice of a character called Mike. Mike is Mike Rafone. He's trademarked. We call him the ultimate talking head on sports. Mike is what he is. He's a microphone, an animated microphone. My goal with Mike is to uh, have him become the first ever uh, uh, animated brand to transcend all sports. So he's not just for basketball. He can report on anything. And Mike is witty. He's funny. He thinks outside the box. He looks through the world of sports through his own unique lens. And he's really my like alter ego. I expect one day to see him on TV on a major network, bannering back and forth with real life sports celebrities or athletes. And then my book, hey, I got it right here, Old School Hoops, Stories of an Aging Baller. Uh, I love doing this. I love penning all 303 pages in the book. And it's just about my story. About, you know, in my 50s, I started playing Masters basketball in all these tournaments around the world. And I chronicle all the friendships that I made, the incredible food that I never would have eaten if I didn't go to these crazy countries like Moldova, Ukraine, Transnistria. I've been in Japan. I've been to Finland. I've been all over Europe, many countries in South America. And uh, I'm, just, I'm so grateful to have penned this book. And it's, it's doing very well. And the feedback I get, it's uh, heartwarming because I try to have mentioned almost everybody that I've ever crossed paths with on the master's basketball circuit in the book. Some have their own dedicated chapters. Others are just mentioned. And I have people that send me thank yous. And, you know, I wake up one morning, there'd be an email from somebody that I hadn't thought about in a year or two and say, hey, thanks. You gave me a shout out in your book. Wasn't that tournament great? I'm so happy that we crossed paths. I'm so happy, you know, that I play old school hoops, you know, with all the rest of you fossils. <laughs> Guys, our time is up, but I have had an incredible time talking to Mr. Jim Sweeney, the author of Old School Hoops, the story of an aging baller. Make sure you guys go pick it up. I'm your host, Sandy White from Simply Fit, your number one health and wellness cheerleader. And remember, we broadcast every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on WYTV7.org. Check out the broadcast from the other broadcasters as well as mine and check your time zone so you don't miss a segment from me. Until next week, talk to you later. Bye. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Michael Jordan, this is Jim Sweeney from Clearwater, Florida. I'm the head of FIMBA USA, the largest senior basketball federation in the world. Uh, we got a bunch of global tournaments coming up. We got a world championship at the ESPN bubble uh, within the next two years. We'd love for you to come out and join us. You could play. Uh, however, I may have to run you through a few drills to see if you still got it, pal. Uh, I'm easy to find. Sweeney at Fimba.net. Sweeney at Fimba.net. And I look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our next Fimba World Championship. Thank you.